My dearly beloved in Christ, the first lesson of a basic catechism tells us the purpose of our existence. God made us to show forth his goodness and to share with us his everlasting happiness in heaven. To gain the happiness of heaven, we must know, love, and serve God in this world. We learn to know, love, and serve God through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who teaches us through the Catholic Church. Our knowledge of right and wrong, good and evil, come to us from the Ten Commandments, sacred scripture, tradition, our conscience, and the nature of the actions themselves. What determines right and wrong? Those things that are in conformity to God's will are good, those things that are in opposition to God's will are evil. If something glorifies God's and leads us to Him, it's good. If it offends God and leads us away from Him, it's evil. When something causes us to use our intellect, will, and senses towards God's glory and our eternal happiness, it is good. The contrary is evil. My dearly beloved in Christ, our focus in life to be, should be to save our soul and go to heaven, thus glorifying God. We can prepare our souls from heaven by striving to conform our wills to God's holy will. We're strengthened to do this by praying often, attending Mass and receiving the sacraments frequently, avoiding deliberate sin and all unnecessary occasions of sin, practicing self-denial and devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and by fighting and fleeing temptations. Daily we're engaged in a spiritual combat against the world, the flesh, and the devil. My dearly beloved in Christ, sin, especially mortal sin, is our greatest obstacle to salvation. When we sin, we freely choose to disobey God's laws. Jacinta said, a sinner is someone who loves sin. Vice, based on pride and self-gratification, places one's own will above God's. Through repeated rejections of grace, the heart becomes hardened. As people become more preoccupied with self, habitual sin becomes almost second nature, and conscience is stifled. In order to silence their guilty conscience, many people resort to loud music, distractions, pornography, drug, or alcohol abuse. The endless pursuit of pleasure prevents people from focusing on what's really important in life, the salvation of their immortal soul. The downfall of any soul, clergy, religious, and laity, never happens all of a sudden or overnight. It always comes on gradually, like paralysis. The main tools Satan uses to cause our spiritual downfall are neglect of prayer and our spiritual exercises, pride, worldliness, and bad companions. A fall from grace usually begins with the neglect of prayer because it is our lifeline to Almighty God. Only in prayer can a soul find the strength needed in life's difficulties. St. John of the Cross said, He who flees from prayer flees from all that is good. A person who gives up regularity in prayer has lost one of the principal means of grace. My dear beloved in Christ, the neglect of prayer spreads to other phases of the spiritual life until it reaches the heart. And that is the end of a person's spirituality. In place of supernatural peace and joy, such a soul falls into mental and spiritual misery and unhappiness. Since as Catholics, we've been well instructed in the faith and clearly know good from evil. If we lose our faith, we will be a cause of scandal and dissatisfaction to many others. A neglect of prayer is often accompanied by selfishness and worldliness. When people lose their sense of responsibility to God, they generally ignore their sacred duties to Him. 
This often leads to reading books and articles opposed to faith and morals. In this weakened state, the soul becomes more spiritual, spiritually blind through association with bad companions. Soon the great treasure of the Catholic faith is thrown overboard. My dearly beloved in Christ, when we contemplate God's greatness, we realize our weakness and dependence upon His grace. Humility is the foundation of all the virtues. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Pride leads to forgetfulness of God and the absence of grace. This leads people to follow their natural inclination to evil. Spiritual blindness is a direct result of pride. Since God is the source of all happiness, our souls can never find contentment when they're separated from Him by mortal sin. Worldly and sinful pleasures can never fully satisfy the soul because it was, it was created for supernatural happiness through union with God. How many souls follow a false delusion of what really constitutes happiness? only to find remorse and depression. My dearly beloved in Christ, gradually Satan's threads are slowly woven about their feet and they sink lower and lower. When separated from God, all the things people think will bring them pleasure only increase their inner misery. As people become more worldly-minded, they no longer clearly see their way through life. My dearly beloved in Christ, one must continue to pray for loved ones, friends, and others who've drifted away from God. For as long as life remains, there's hope. Grace and friendship with God will restore peace and happiness to them. Through God's love and the forgiveness and forgiveness, the soul experiences supernatural joy. St. Paul encourages his followers to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which has been created according to God in justice and holiness of truth. Although everyone is weak and has a tendency to evil due to original sin, God reminded St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for strength is made perfect in weakness. Prayer gives needed heavenly strength to help one practice virtue, and observe the Ten Commandments. My dearly beloved in Christ, sight is one of the most precious gifts bestowed by God. Through it, a person can view the wonders God created and move about safely and confidently. Spiritual sight helps a person put life into perspective. It encourages one to avoid evil and persevere in doing good. It keeps one's eyes on the goal, reaching the everlasting happiness of heaven. My dear and beloved in Christ, when we feel weak and contemplate giving up our faith, we must beg God's grace of perseverance to carry our cross no matter how heavy it may seem. Our Lord and Our Lady will always help us to bear our crosses bravely. After this short life, God will reward our fidelity with everlasting, unending happiness with Him in heaven. The sad experience of countless souls teaches us that the rejection of the traditional Catholic faith leads to remorse of conscience and incredible misery. Burden with a guilty conscience, such souls find only anguish and unhappiness. We've received unique and singular graces from God to understand and practice the traditional Catholic faith in these evil times. If we frequently call upon the Blessed Virgin to take us under her mantle of protection, devoutly recite her rosary, and daily pray for final perseverance, we will safely reach our heavenly home and the reward that God has prepared for us. Be generous and courageous in serving God and above all, practice supernatural charity. By faith, which is believing what God reveals to us, we get out of the dark cave of doubt 
and not knowing what life is all about. By hope, which is, is trusting in God to give us the strength to be saved, we overcome fear and despair. By charity, we love God with all our might and our neighbor as ourselves. I'd just like to close with the story. There was once an Arab scholar named Moloch. He was young and strong and learned. But Moloch's brow was wrinkled with thought as he walked out of the caliph's palace one day. A caliph, you know, is an Arab ruler. The caliph had just told Moloch to do what seemed impossible. He had told him to write all the wisdom of the world into one little book. What would you do if someone told you to do that? You wouldn't know. Neither did Malik know what to do. But he was young and strong and learned. He began to travel the world and to write. After ten years, he returned to the caliph and said, My lord, I brought you all the wisdom in the world, but it's not in one book. It is in 500 books. It will not do, said the caliph. I have not time to read 500 books. Malik went off again and took his 500 books with him. Ten years later, he came back with the wisdom of the world in 100 books. It will not do, said Caliph. It will not do. My sight is failing. and I have not time to read 100 books before I die. Malik went off again. He was himself no longer young and strong. He must hurry. He worked and worked until he had all the wisdom of the world boiled down into 50 books. It will not do, said the caliph. Malak walked off again. I can do no more, he mused. What will become of me? He sat down and cried himself to sleep. He was awakened by a little boy saying things out loud from a, little, a small book. Malik took the book, read it, and ran quickly to the caliph with it. Here, my lord, is the wisdom of the world in one book. Take and read. The caliph read it and said, You've done well, Malik. It will do. Name your reward. Malik left the palace mumbling to himself, If I'd only found this book 30 years ago, could have saved myself a lot of trouble. Now, what was the book that Malik took to the caliph in such a hurry? Here it is, the catechism. All the wisdom of the world in one little book. There are many people walking about our cities at this moment who are trying to find the answer to some important questions. They're asking themselves, where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? What is the purpose of life? And trying to find the answer, they flounder around like Malik did. They could find their answers very easily in the catechism. God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world to be happy with him in the next. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.